I invite you to maybe watch the talk Mike gave 10 years ago. And so you'll be able to compare, right? You'll be able to compare the two. And, I th and I'm sure that will be, uh, that will be kind of quite of insightful. I will never watch the, f the movie, The Terminal, <laughs> anymore in the same way that now I've seen a CLI <laughs> thing on The Terminal. So yeah, you made my day. You definitely made my day on this. I was not prepared, right? I, I was not ready. Definitely not. So yeah, so this is a glimpse about uh, what, ha what, what, will, what happened and what, we, what may happen, right? Uh, as we say, this is, there is a, in the future, there is what can be done or what should be done. And the main idea is like, is it desirable? This is something we desire, right? Sometimes everything we have to build is not things that are desirable. So yeah, so Mike will help us to show like, yeah, this, we had some main really important principles about to how we built technology in the past for people who wanted to do it for good. So yeah, let's spend in two days about the next 10 years about how we can maybe re rethink everything we do in, in setup, is, is it what I'm building is desirable? So that le let's, let's focus on that. So, <coughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's winter. So now we will have our second keynote speaker is also someone extremely experienced in API space, uh, an expert of the API industry. He has been an entrepreneur, uh, now is a, an analyst and a researcher, and one of the top analyst company of the world, maybe the top company of the, uh, uh, the top analyst company of the world. I will ask you to have a warm applause for Mark O'Neill from Gartner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, so it's always hard to follow Mike, uh, but uh, Mike's given us a very good overview of the past uh, of APIs and what's led up to uh, the current situation. Um, I'm gonna talk uh, about the, the presence of APIs. So talk about how we are, um, let me uh, make sure I'm sharing my screen here. I'm gonna be talking about um, the, yep, let me, whoops. Talking about uh, the current situation with, uh, oh, here we go. The t current situation um, regarding we had it there for a moment. Ah, we do have it. Uh, the current situation of APIs. So that includes, as you know from Gartner, what we are, are cover regarding uh, surveys, our hype cycle, and for those of you who came here uh, earlier, you saw some magic. So I'll be also showing a different kind of magic, which is the, the Gartner magic quadrant. Um, so let me, uh, start with the current situation of APIs. So as you know, in Gartner, we like to do uh, a lot of surveys. Uh, earlier this year, we did a survey about what kinds of APIs organizations have. So do you have internal APIs? Do you use APIs that are being provided by third parties? Do you have private invitation only APIs that your partners use? Or do you publicly expose APIs? Uh, and you can see from our survey results that maybe not surprisingly, internal APIs are now almost universal. They really are ubiquitous. Um, most organizations have them, then you see some plan to have them, and very few have no plans. Uh, what's interesting is what comes second here is APIs that organizations are using, third-party APIs. And I'll talk about that because that shows some of the gaps at the moment in, in tooling. Uh, and you can also see at the bottom what's very interesting is that publicly exposed APIs actually we found are more common here in Europe than in North America. And why is that? A lot of the organizations we surveyed included financial services organizations, banks and others. Of course, here in Europe, there's PSD2 legislation, uh, which of course drives organizations to provide public APIs. Uh, so there's interesting geographical differences here. But as I say, I'd like to talk about the use of uh, APIs as, as they have changed over time. Uh, and we are able to compare the survey we did this year with the survey we did in 2019, before, of course, COVID-19. And you could see here that internal APIs have grown, um, but a big growth is the use or planning to use APIs that are provided by third parties, uh, a big growth there 
Uh, and, and you can see also a, a growth really across the board with APIs, uh, because of course APIs underpin a lot of the technologies that came to the fore during the pandemic, including of course using uh, mobile apps, doing things like uh, remote ordering, uh, contactless pickups, and so on. Uh, in Gartner, we've in fact hired a lot of people coming from organizations like, for example, Best Buy in the US who had to very quickly implement contactless pickup at their stores, and, and the, the, the folks that we hired from there were responsible for the APIs that underpin that. So AP, APIs really were important and came to the fore uh, even more so over the past few years. As I mentioned, third-party APIs are really important, and, and we asked people in our survey, what are these third-party APIs that your organization depends upon? Uh, and maybe not surprisingly, Salesforce is up there. A lot of people use Salesforce in general, and they use the APIs of Salesforce. You can see Oracle, you can see open banking APIs, you can see things like Zapier, you can see uh, different healthcare APIs, DocuSign. A lot of people use DocuSign's API to bring signing into an application, uh, of course, also driven by the pandemic. Uh, logistics like Smart Freight and others. There's a huge... Uh, variety of these APIs and really is something that has a long tail of lots and lots of third-party APIs. Uh, as Mehdi mentioned, I myself have an entrepreneurial background, co-founded two different companies, and one of the interesting things when you're working as a Gartner analyst is you talk to a lot of organizations that have requirements. You know, you, you may or may not be aware, but uh, we do a lot of client inquiries. There have been years when I've done over 750 client inquiries with different organizations. And they will say to me, you know, okay, Gartner Analyst, can you tell me what's a company that provides like service mesh? Or what's a company that will provide security for APIs? But one of the questions I get asked is, they will say, our organization is consuming lots of APIs. Our developers are using different APIs. We're using APIs as part of integrations, let's say to Salesforce and others. And we want to manage how our organization is using these APIs. We want to be able to see like the universe of APIs that we are using, that we could use. And we want to understand if those APIs go down, if they suffer a security breach, what's going to be the implications for us. Now, the problem is there really are not many, if at all, tools that do this. Uh, we'll later on look at the magic quantum for API management, but API management concentrates on selling to the producers of APIs. So you buy an API management solution if you're an API provider, and there's a real gap in the market to help the API consumer. So as I say, if I was back in my startup entrepreneurial founder days, that's what I would found, a company that helps organizations manage the APIs that they consume that they depend upon. It's a real, real gap in the market for that. I'm always interested to hear um, any, any uh, products that do that because, of course, as a Gartner analyst, uh, we get asked this question a lot and we would be very interested in, in seeing that. And, of course, it's not, it's not a typical API management solution because those are, those are used by the API providers. We're talking about API consumers here. The other thing that I'll quickly do since we're talking about previous API days, is tell a quick story about this. Um, at one of the uh, speaker dinners that Mehdi organized, we had Chris Messina. Uh, and at the time, uh, of course, Chris had just come from Uber. And you might know Chris Messina as the inventor of the hashtag. Uh, so he uh, invented and, and popularized the use of hashtags. So Chris Messina was talking about how at Uber, they have an internal API portal, which shows like the universe of APIs that you can use as a developer. So when you joined Uber and you wanted to use an API, let's say, to do a background check on drivers, you could see, okay, Uber has signed up for, let's say, Checker. Checker does background checks. Or if you wanted to find an API that, of course, did mapping or an API that sends notifications and so on, you'll see Twilio, you see Google Maps API, and so on. So the developer joins Uber, and then they see the universe of APIs that they can use. And of course, it includes APIs from other teams as well, too, within Uber. And whenever I describe that to anybody, 
they say, yes, we want that. Who does that? Like, I want that for my organization. But of course, Uber, being a software company, they built that themselves. Their developers built it. That's the kind of thing that, that organizations need. So, going back to the survey, we also asked, like, who's responsible for API quality and management? And, and again, there was a big difference from 2019 to 2022. Uh, in 2019, there was a lot of respondents that says, no team owns the responsibility. Our individual developers are responsible for the API quality and management. That's gone down. What's gone up is the use of COEs, but also platform teams. Uh, so Mike mentioned team topologies. Uh, we see a huge growth in the use of platform teams. Uh, and platform teams is more than just platform engineering. You can see platform engineering is relatively low, but growing but platform teams in general. So a platform team for APIs, platform team for API quality. Um, and central IT team has gone down over time, and so has uh, the responsibility of being amongst the integration team. But thankfully, no team owns the responsibility has also gone down, but it still is you know, relatively high at 8% at there, or individual developers too. So, as you know, we cover API management. I'll show the magic quadrant later on that we have for API management. This is almost a saturated market. You can see the big 70% of organizations have API management today. 13% plan to use API management solutions. Uh, that's the opportunity for API management vendors and probably a small amount of organizations have no plans. Uh, we'll see later what these solutions look like. They have been changing uh, over the recent years. Uh, but what I would add here is sometimes organizations have multiple gateways. I'll be talking about that later. So it doesn't mean that if an organization already has API management, they are still likely adding gateways to what they have. So looking more at our survey, we asked what are the challenges of, of API strategy? And actually, you might think that security would be top, and it's high, it's high up there. Uh, the highest challenge, in fact, was the missing key roles. So like API product managers, but that tended to be more, as you see in the bottom here, more in large organizations than smaller ones. Of course, they would have the budget or the larger teams to create roles like that. Lack of standards is always up there. It's the common question we get at Gartner. Where are the industry API standards? Uh, so people who are, in, let's say, in the shipping industry, they're used to EDI. So my own background way back, 25 plus years ago, was actually at EDI. EDI is often overlooked as one of the ancestors of, of APIs and certainly web services before that. Uh, and, and people who come from that background know there are standards in shipping, standards in insurance uh, and other areas. Uh, and they're often very confused about where the API standards are. And sometimes that's a misunderstanding because of course your requirements might be different than others. If we look at you know, FedEx and we look at UPS, both broadly doing the same thing with APIs, but their APIs are different. Uh, and that's not as much of an issue as people may think because of course if their APIs are well documented, if they're developer portals, SDKs, getting started guides, it's not so much a challenge to get up and running uh, with those. Uh, and then, of course, lack of skills, too. Uh, and we did ask, of course, for respondents to elaborate on the challenges. Uh, so you saw before that, but you can see skill gaps is up there, discovery of APIs, security of APIs, of course. Uh, and then down at the bottom, the old ESB mindset being applied to API platforms. Uh, and, and that's also something I'll talk about. And what we mean by that, well, what I presume the respondent meant by that is that API platforms and technologies would be seen as these very complex, multifunction Swiss army knife solutions that are doing transformation, mediation, a bit of security and so on. And before you know it, you've, you've created an ESB again. Uh, and then of course, security comes up multiple times there. So moving along from the survey, uh, I'll talk a bit about who, who buys APIs because this is a little bit of a 
uh, counterfactual at the moment in terms that people do still think, you know, APIs, of course, are used by developers, so they must be bought by developers as well. It's kind of a truism. Of course, there's the famous uh, Twilio billboard that's still up there. I was driving past it recently um, on the 101 approach south, up, going up to San Francisco. And yes, developers use APIs, but as Mike mentioned earlier, with low code, with APIs being used as part of lots of applications, Salesforce, Shopify, HubSpot, Marketo, more of what we would in Gartner call business technologists are using APIs implicitly by bringing third-party functionality into these types of platforms. They don't know it, but APIs are there under the hood. Uh, so it is important, we always say, of course, to make sure developers are happy, to focus on developer experience, which is another big trend we're seeing at Gartner, uh, but also to think about how APIs are used by non-developers. The other thing that um, we have been advising our clients a lot about as well recently is that even though a developer might find an API, they're not always the people who are buying the API. They're signing up for the API. So you need to think about who's the ultimate customer here uh, as well. Uh, and it would be their leadership, their management, uh, or in fact, it might in fact be their management that asked them to use the API in the first place. So yes, developer is important, developer experience is key, but you do need to think broadly as well about how your APIs are used. Uh, also, really for a number of years, we've, we've seen a the growth of API products. Uh, and we would define these as APIs that are grouped together as a product for a recognizable business purpose. So something a non-technical person would understand like lead generation. You can see here uh, the example from Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, and these are managed as products. You sign up for the APIs. And in fact, when we are evaluating API management solutions at Gartner for our Magic Quadrant, we ask about this. So can you create and manage API products in your solution? Uh, for many of the vendors, it's quite simplistic. They will say, yes, you can group APIs together. Okay, great. But can I have like a pricing plan for those APIs together as a product? Can I have an experience for a product manager to see their own product, uh, understand the customers, as we saw earlier, Who's buying it? Who's using it? How is it being used? Is it being used through Salesforce, Marketo? What kind of clients, um, app programming languages, applications are being used, uh, and so on. Uh, so there is a growth of, of API products, which is different than treating an individual API as a product, of course, with lifecycle management and a product manager, but this is overall API products and many well-known companies there. We, uh, in Gartner, cover that as well as part of the, the trends that you will see here now. So I showed our survey there. We like to do lots of surveys at Gartner. We also uh, produce hype cycles. So before I joined Gartner, I, I actually didn't realize Gartner has so many hype cycles. You think about the Gartner hype cycle and you think there's gonna be one hype cycle. In fact, we have hype cycles for all sorts of different categories including for APIs. So this is our hype cycle for APIs, 2020. I'm gonna pick out a few um, things from it, but just to give a, pr a brief introduction to what is the hype cycle, what we saw a long time ago in Gartner was that technology goes through this type of a life cycle. So technology has a lot of buzz and interest, new technologies coming from early adopters uh, from thought leaders who start to, to use them, then it reaches more usage, is at like the peak hype, uh, and then that means that you know, everybody wants to use the technology, we're getting a lot of inquiries about it at Gartner. Then what happens is people start to actually use that technology, they start to in fact have failures and disasters with that technology, they start to realize in fact this is not going to completely changed the world, it's not perfect, and then it goes down into the trough of disillusionment. But just the same as the top of the hype cycle is exaggerated, people think things are more hype than they should be, the bottom is also exaggerated. P 
people get despondent about technologies. In, in one of our other hype cycles, we have microservices at the bottom. So there's, there's a backlash against technologies. Uh, and then, of course, it goes up. Um, and then it becomes, in a way, more boring with less hype. And people are just using this um, technology in their day-to-day -day world, like mediated APIs. Almost becomes ubiquitous, too. So looking at a few of the items, uh, here we see graph APIs. Um, almost at the top of the hype cycle, I noticed a lot of vendors here talking about graph APIs. And of course, we get the question, like, why in Gartner do we put graph APIs here? Why is it not GraphQL? Uh, and the reason is because graph APIs are a superset of the technology. You can use GraphQL. But if you look at Microsoft's graph API, if you look at other graph APIs, they may not be using GraphQL. So you, you can have a graph style API in, in other ways. And it has been growing, but I was looking at our inquiries about GraphQL, and, he, and you can see it is leveling off. It's still growing a lot. You can see a big growth in interest in GraphQL, um, in particular from 2020 to 2021, but it, it's still high. It's growing, but leveling off. Uh, Event-driven APIs, again, you can see that um, here at, at the conference. Um, again, it's not just async API, but also a lot of webhooks, which has been around for years and years. WebSocket, subscriptions, you know, GraphQL is an event-based approach. And there really is a requirement to manage APIs across request response APIs, um, traditional REST APIs. I heard somebody say to me on an inquiry recently, legacy REST APIs. So um, that's uh, where we are now. Uh, but what I would say is legacy as defined as what we are actually using today. Um, but of course, uh, Gra GraphQL based subscriptions, webhooks, async API, um, people want to be able to manage all that together with REST APIs. Uh, and then what we in Gartner call API-centric SaaS. It's a bit of a clunky name. But this means SaaS services that are primarily driven as APIs. Those are up near the top of the hype cycle. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's lots of these. There's a lot of hype around them. You know, an API for that. You know, APIs for video processing. APIs for banking data. You know, here in Europe with Tink. APIs for healthcare pre-screening. Lots and lots of APIs. Uh, and we, again, track this in Gartner. You, you could have... Like Mehdi's diagram earlier, you could have a huge uh, landscape of, of these. Um, but I've just chosen one from each uh, industry here. Um, and, and of course, these are the APIs that organizations are consuming when I talked about that earlier. Now, where do they find the APIs? Well, you could find them in marketplaces. Um, but again, uh, going back to previous years of API days, I remember uh, at a session like this that um, I believe it was Mehdi who said, you know, put your hands up, who goes searching for APIs in API marketplaces? Uh, and very few people put their hands up. Because if I want to find, let's say, a payments API, or if I want to find an API for like healthcare pre-screening, I'm likely to just either already know about, let's say, Stripe, or I'll just simply do a Google search. So the idea of like API marketplace uh, as a uh, big catalog of APIs in the sky, that is down in the trough. Uh, but there is a bright spot, which is internal API marketplaces. We've seen a huge amount of inquiries in Gartner about backstage, like internal developer portals and the use of those for publishing APIs. Uh, and, uh, and the whole ecosystem around backstage is very hot at the moment. Uh, and of course, that can lead back to what I was mentioning earlier about having a way to manage the APIs that organizations are consuming. And then security is hot too. We don't have just one dot on the hype cycle for security. We have three for testing, threat protection, and access control. Uh, they're different. Uh, testing is the one at the top at the moment. There's a lot of hype around discovery of APIs. We got a lot of questions. Can you? find like what type of solutions can discover the APIs I have built and the APIs that I've used. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no good answer to that right now. You have different solutions that will discover APIs as long as you point them to the place where the APIs are, um, which of course is 
one step behind. So it'll, you can say, well, can you discover the APIs that we have built on AWS? Can you discover the APIs that we have built on, let's say, a team using Spring? But really what organizations want is to be able to discover the APIs without saying that first. Um, and, uh, and we do see some vendors moving towards that. Um, and then if we look at API security in a little bit more detail, this is something I um, have written about at Gartner, there are different attack vectors for APIs. It's always useful in security to uh, look at, first of all, the attacks and then the remediation. Uh, one of the big attack vectors um, is on the client side. And this is a hard problem. How do you protect API keys that are being issued and already used by clients? In Gartner, we often talk to large organizations, typical Gartner client like banks and others. They're issuing API keys out to startups, fintechs and others. They do not trust those companies to manage the API keys or other credentials in a secure way. They don't trust the security hygiene. So they want to know how can we secure our APIs when we have organizations we really do not trust using the APIs. And when I say do not trust, they don't, they don't think they have good security practices in place. And that, in fact, it can be where machine learning can come into play, where you're seeing unusual traffic coming from a client or from an API key that's been issued. Um, also, API keys being, or other credentials being carelessly stored in cloud services. And then, of course, logic flaws in the APIs themselves. Looking at how API security is delivered, there's different ways. Um, and you can see on the top right, some vendors that will look at APIs as they're being built, discover those type of logic flaws, do testing. What if I pass a zero parameter? What if I pass a minus number? What if I increment a certain parameter? What happens then? Um, in the top left, discovering unsecured APIs, so-called zombie APIs, uh, APIs that may have been built by teams under the radar in your organization. That's where discovery comes in. And then in the bottom, uh, a lot of vendors, including some here, who will work with your gateway or proxy uh, to do security um, augmentation of what is happening. And API security, as we saw in the hype cycle, is high, particularly around discovery. Uh, so finally, I'm going to talk about API management trends and, and lead up to our, our, our famous uh, magic quadrants. But as you've seen, we do more than magic quadrants at Gardner, uh, but we are often uh, known for those. So one of the big trends is the API gateways. Uh, and you saw that comment from someone we surveyed about how API management can become like an ESB again. And this is where there's bloat being added. So one of the things that tends to be a cycle in this industry is API gateways come along, people then want to use them to do all sorts of different things, they do remediation, remedi transformation, orchestration, and before you know it, you've created like the gateway Soros here. Like it's too big, too much bloat, too difficult to manage. So there's a big trend now of modern low footprint API gateways um, and some of those folks here. We also see a big trend of bring your own gateway API management where organizations have gateways and they just want management on top of those gateways. They don't want another gateway. They don't want a big honking gateway. As, as a client once said to me, API management used to be vendors saying, buy my big honking gateway. Now you already have a gateway. You have the AWS API gateway. You have API gateways that come to your platform. Gateways are commoditized for the most part now, but you still need API management on top of those. It needs to be developer-friendly, declarative, where you don't have to necessarily go into a UI to manage that. So to that end, we have a new market guide in Gartner just for API gateways. So you don't need all of API management. You're all set for design, testing. You have a portal versioning, you just need a gateway. Um, and so what we've done is uh, done that. Some of the vendors, again, that are here um, are in that. Um, and, and that really shows the world beyond overall API management. But that said, of course, there are organizations that just want, that do want a full solution. Uh, and for that, we have this magic quadrant here um, that I, I'll end with but it shows what we call full lifecycle API management. So this is the, the recent one that we put out uh, in September. And you can see here that there's uh, 
different types of vendors here, you know, some well-known vendors. Um, and of course, this is full lifecycle API management. So this is more than the gateway. But in some cases, they could be vendors that do not have a gateway. So they'll work with the gateway that you have, um, which is a very frequent request that we get. And then you see honorable mentions. These are vendors we would love to have been able to include, but maybe they don't yet have the revenue or the, the reach um, to um, be in, in the magic quadrant. But you can see a mix of vendors here, but it's moving away from the idea of it being totally gateway centric. I would say that even though, as I say, people do want to assemble API management with gateways and portals, I do and, and my colleagues do often talk to people that just want an overall solution that does it all. I mean, that's still a big part of, of the market. Um, and you know, another gap is what I would call bring your own gateway API portals. So this is a very frequent, frequent question we get asked in Gartner too, where an organization has a gateway, what they want is a portal maybe that would work with multiple gateways. So a single pane of glass to look at your APIs that integrates with the AWS gateway, that integrates with Apogee, that integrates with MuleSoft. And I have to say a lot of people will say, yes, our product does that. But we always say, get a demo, do a POC, because it's easier said than done to do this. And it, it is a big requirement out there. And we're always interested in seeing examples of this, but particularly how they work with the gateways. So I'll leave you with uh, a glimpse of the future. As I've talked about, API products are growing, um, but we do see a market gap to help organizations on how they're consuming those, how they're using those products. API security is moving forward in maturity. We do expect to see, of course, the big players in security, maybe acquiring some of the vendors, gradually adding security for APIs themselves. We see a big requirement for gateway agnostic API management, or bring your own gateway API management, and also portals that will work with gateways, in fact, with multiple different gateways as well. Uh, we see GraphQL and event-driven APIs growing too. So uh, as many and Mike have said, we've had 10 years of API days, and uh, at, at Gardner, we're really looking forward to the next 10 years. So thank you all very much. <laughs>